What's up guys, Aria Edits here and I've got another After Effects tutorial. Um, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to create the intro that I used in my last video as I had a few requests for it. Um, it was an intro that I made for my friend um, and I've also got a few subscribers from that channel um, and they would like to know how it's done. Um, so that's what I'm going to be covering in this video today. Um, all you're going to need is After Effects and a plugin called uh, Element 3D uh, in the description. I'll put a link to a video showing you how to get this plugin and then we'll be able to get cracking straight away. So um, in this uh, example I'm going to be using a text layer but uh, we're going to start off with a new composition. Five seconds long, all your own settings, that's fine. I'm going to use a test layer, you can use a, uh, a mask layer if you wanted to like I did in that example then with the Spider-Man logo. But um, in this example I'm just going to use text, we'll type in YouTube or so we'll just do aria it's easier put it in the middle and we simply just add the element effect onto it and then we're going to go to custom layers custom text and masks because it's a text layer and we'll put layer one to our um, text layer and then once we've done that we can go into the scene setup and uh, alter the scene uh, to our preference uh, once we're in here, we can click Extrude and straight away you have got this 3D um, environment with your 3D text in it, which is great. Um, what I'm actually going to do is go to the... Actually, no, I'm going to leave that for now. First of all, I'm going to add a um, <coughs> material onto it. I downloaded the Pro Shaders pack, by the way. Um, if you haven't looked at that, Google or YouTube that. Um, I really recommend it because I actually use the uh, Metal uh, materials a lot. I used this one in the example before. I really, I really do like that. And what I do is go into the metal uh, properties, and we can actually, if we go to bump, it's on 40%. I like to change that to about 250, and that actually makes it a lot more 3D. If you have a look, it actually brings uh, the bevel and um, it, it, it extrudes. It actually does bump the material out from the text. Makes it look a lot better especially in um, material, um, <coughs> uh, sorry, metal materials. And uh, what else am I going to do? If we go to the actually extrude model, and we go down, you can mess about with some of the properties on here. Maybe, um, hmm, oh, I don't want to mess with that. Oh, sorry, if we go to the metal properties, and uh, the first one's called extrude, if we just alter that, you can decide how thick you'd like the object or the text to be um, that seems about right I suppose I'm also going to add an environment onto it so if we check environment here and we click environment up here and we can actually um, we've got a list of um, pictures we can use for our environment I like to use the studio picture and we'll have that in the background and uh, if you press control you can actually drag it around and you can change the lighting on the text which is really cool Maybe something like that uh, because I'm also going to add a, a light. I'm going to add a red light like I did in the other example. I did it in the other example just because of the Spider Man theme, but um, it turned out to look quite nice. And we can also, um, well, we can alter the um, light actually in After Effects. So if you click OK, and we make it a 3D layer as well so we can actually see the whole text. That's quite important. Uh, what we can do is add. Hmm, we'll add a new camera to start off with and uh, we'll get the camera we can hit C and uh, you can keep hitting C and uh, it will give you a lots of different tools to use we're going to use this tool and zoom in to about there that seems great and if we go, if we click on the text layer again we've got all these options if we go to um, uh, what do we, world transform and we can go to world rotation we rotate it on the y-axis just to about there I'm going to use a um, depth of field effect to make it look really realistic now so then we go into the camera layer um, we'll have a look at the camera options and then we can turn on uh, depth of field and we can alter the depth of field um, to your personal preference you want to really be messing about with the uh, focus of distance and the aperture on this um, to get the desired effect that you'd like. I can't remember the settings that I usually use though. So I'm just gonna mess about with these, see what looks good and what doesn't. Hmm. 
I'm just going to pause the video right now and I'll get back to when I find the right uh, focus of distance and aperture, okay? Okay, I think I've got the right settings now. I've got the focus of distance on about 787 and the aperture on about 208. Um, you just got to mess around with them settings to be honest until you find what you're looking for. It's going to be different in every scene anyway. As you can see, it actually blurs out the foreground, uh, the background and it makes the foreground a lot more sharp which I do like. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do next is if we go back to our text layer, um, go to render settings, we can also <coughs> mess about with the environment and lighting in this. <coughs> if we go into lighting and we change it to red light again and we actually go into I think is it additional lighting and then rotation and rotate the light until we get something along the lines of what we're looking for of course it'll be different for uh, every scene like I say it's just personal preference I'm not really going to go into it too much here and um, <coughs> because I'm only using it for a tutorial so it makes no difference to me um, I'm just gonna uh, add a quick animation onto it so if we're in the world transform and I'm in the world rotation here I'm just gonna hit what um, uh, a keyframe on the Y rotation uh, bring it to maybe I don't know, a second, I'm going to rotate it, to, hmm, I'm going to rotate it to about, there, and then if we hit U we can actually see the uh, keyframes, then I'm actually just going to put another keyframe over there, just to about, there, so that seems about right. What we're also going to want to do is um, tick on motion blur in the um, in the composition and make sure motion blur is selected on the actual layer that you're going to be using. So if we actually just <coughs> take a look at this, um, I'm just going to do a ramp preview right now and I think it will look quite cool. Um, it's really good with the um, environment lighting as well because that gives it a real realistic look. And um, you'll be able to see already that we're kind of getting the look that I showed you um, in the start of the video with the example. So let's just play this. As you can see, the depth of field really looks good in this shot as well. How this is really sharp and it's blurred out down there. We've got the motion blur as it spins around, as you can see. And that's how we get a sort of look like this. So you can see how this came about. Um, so you've just got to mess around the settings until you find something that you really like. Um, if you've got any questions, just ask and um, I'll uh, reply to them in the, as best as I can. Uh, but apart from that, please like the video and subscribe.